Hi friends, good morning. Welcome to Up With Creme on a Monday. Hope you're feeling good after a weekend, I'm sure, of a lot of Christmas festivities going on. It's a busy weekend. It's good to see you. I'm Tim Pham. Yeah, and I'm Brandon T. Jones, filling in for Channing Curtis. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah. so happy. I mean, Tim was, uh, you know, you're the anchor when I was here in my first stint on yeah. the weekend, so it's like, I'm honored to be sitting oh, next I'm to Tim Pham right now. Oh, I'm honored to sit next to Brandon T. The honor is, is mine. Oh, no, well, no. You fill in when Channing and I are off, yeah. and so it's, it's rare that we get to do this, and it's rare that we also get Thomas to join us too. One, two, three, <laughs> and Nicole, right? <laughs> right, we, yeah. we can't leave out Nicole this morning either. So the bro show plus Nicole is what yeah. we said. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we've been, uh, we've been uh, trying to get our managers to let uh, Nicole and Brandon anchor together, at least on a noon show one of these days. So uh, maybe we'll uh, rehash some of those. But for our weather forecast this morning, it is once again foggy out there. No surprise after this weekend snowfall. And there's a ton of excess moisture to be had in the atmosphere. So yes, it is materializing as some patchy, dense fog through the morning. Morning hours. Thankfully, our temperatures are just barely above the freezing mark, so you don't have to do any windshield scraping or uh, getting rid of any of the frost out there this morning because we are, again, just above the freezing mark, even if it is by a degree. Quarter mile visibility out at Spokane International Airport. It is the West Plains of Spokane that are reporting the lowest visibilities. So if you're heading west out of town along I-90 or Highway 2, that is where you'll run into the most fog. There is also a little bit of some light rain along I-90, especially on either side of 4th of July Pass and through some areas of the Palouse. But the rain is light and the fog is patchy this morning. Well, this morning, closing arguments are expected to begin in the trial of three Tacoma police officers charged with the death of Manuel Ellis. The trial has been going on for more than two months. After closing arguments, the jury will receive instructions, then deliberations will begin. The key here is that there is no timeline for how long those deliberations may last. Manuel Ellis died in police custody in March of 2020, just weeks before George Floyd's death triggered a nationwide reckoning on race and policing. Ellis died after being tased and tackled by officers. He repeatedly told the officers he couldn't breathe as he was restrained. So here are the three Tacoma police officers that are facing charges. Officer Timothy Rankin is charged with first degree manslaughter in Ellis's death. Officers Matthew Collins and Christopher Burbank are charged with second degree murder and first degree manslaughter. And happening today, Spokane Valley is hosting an open house this evening to talk about their homeless action plan. Our Nicole Hernandez is live in the valley this morning. And Nicole, when and where is this open house? So, Brandon, the open house is going to be here at the Center Place Event Center in Spokane Valley, of course, and it's starting at 5 o'clock this evening. So the city is going to be giving the community a chance to come down and hear about their homelessness action plan and then answer any questions people here in the community have about that plan and how it's going to work as they start implementing it. So representatives from the city, the police department, and other community organizations will all be here. The homeless action plan is something Spokane Valley has been working on for years years now. It's a plan for how the city is going to try and reduce and prevent homelessness. In the past two years, the community has already had a few opportunities to give their opinions on what should be in the plan, and now Spokane Valley officially adopted the plan last week. So again, this meeting happening right here at the Center Place Event Center. It's going to be happening from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock this evening. In Spokane Valley, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. Thanks, Nicole. This weekend, an Idaho judge denied a motion by the state to move Chad Daybell's trial out of Ada County. The state filed that motion last month. Prosecutors say it was because of significant changes to circumstances after the venue was set. Daybell's team filed a motion a few days later to keep his trial in Ada County. They accused the state of forum shopping in order to gain an advantage. Daybell and his wife, Lori Vallow, were charged with the murders of Daybell's first wife and two of Vallow's children. Vallow was convicted in their deaths earlier this year. Chad Daybell's trial is set. For April 1st. Well, developing this morning, one man and one woman are dead after a shooting on Friday night in Northeast Spokane. Police found the two people after responding to multiple gunshots. SPD is not saying if there are any suspects at this time. The Major Crimes Unit is currently investigating. They're asking anyone with surveillance video to call Crime Check, and that number is there at the bottom of your screen. 
And the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Washington announced a federal jury indicted a man for trafficking fentanyl in meth. Court documents show video at Northern Quest Casino captured an alleged drug transaction in the parking lot. Tribal police later arrested Charles Dickerson. Documents claim police found him with 12 grams of cocaine, over 130 Skittles believed to contain fentanyl, and an estimated $18,000 in cash. This indictment comes just days after the same U.S. attorney testified before U.S. Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. She spoke about efforts being made in eastern Washington to help with the fentanyl crisis, including drug prevention and education programs. What we've needed to do to be able to effectively prosecute these drugs is really to work in coordination with our local, state, and tribal partners to share information so that we can most effectively go after the largest tra traffickers of drugs in our communities and really ensure that we can go you know, cut the snake's head off in making sure that these dangerous drugs don't get into our communities. The U.S. Attorney says she's proud of the work her office and federal partners are doing to prosecute and remove dangerous drugs. The time now is 6.07. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. There won't be any more Spokane City Council meetings for the rest of the year. So City Council resumes their meetings on January 8th. And that's two weeks after incoming mayor-elect Lisa Brown will be sworn into office. It'll also be Betsy Wilkerson's first term as Spokane City Council President. Well, a quick reminder for you, if you are traveling this winter, traction tires and chains may be required at over the passes and they're required to be with you at all times, even if they're not required to be on your tires. If you're not prepared, you could face a fine of up to $500. If you do need a refresher on how to put your chains on, we've made it easy for you. All you do have to do is text the word chains to our text line, that's 509-448-2000, and we will send you a link with some tips and tricks. Well, the Sawtooth Avalanche Center says the, uh, the danger is now considerable in the Sawtooth National Forest. They say large human-triggered avalanches are likely thanks to a layer of weak snow near the ground. Well, here in North Idaho, the Idaho Panhandle Avalanche Center says they'll start issuing avalanche advisories starting tomorrow. They'll be issued on Tuesday and Friday mornings. That is a look at your morning rush. So for years, people warned pet parents that poinsettias can be deadly. That's right, Tim. And then Arion Dathil with our exclusive verified team setting the record straight on this claim once and for all. Poinsettias are one of the most popular holiday plants. Their colorful leaves can range from a creamy white to a bright red. For years, people have claimed that the plant is lethal to cats and dogs. Recent online search trends show people are wondering about that claim as they start decorating for the holidays. So let's verify. Are poinsettias deadly to pets? Our sources are the ASPCA, the American Kennel Club, and the Pet Poison Helpline. Snap open a leaf of the plant and its milky white sap will ooze out. The chemicals in the sap are similar to those found in detergents. If cats and dogs consume them, they may experience gastrointestinal irritation, such as nausea, vomiting, drooling, or sometimes diarrhea. Contact with the sap can also cause skin irritation, including redness, swelling, and itchiness. But all three of our sources agree that chemicals found in the plant's sap are only mildly toxic to pets, not fatal. The Pet Poison Helpline website says claims about pet poisoning from the plant's sap are greatly exaggerated. So we can verify, no. Poinsettias are not deadly to pets. But consuming the sap and the plant's leaves in general is still not good for them. So to be safe, the American Kennel Club recommends keeping poinsettias out of your pet's reach during the holiday season. The ASPCA says holly and mistletoe, which can cause gastrointestinal irritation, as well as cardiovascular problems when ingested, should also be kept out of your pet's reach. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. 610 and our weather conditions this morning are a bit foggy, but this time just above the freezing mark, which can make a big difference. 
when we do get fog conditions like what we're seeing this morning. So at 33, 34 degrees, it is just a uh, excess moisture. It's not a freezing fog. It's not uh, accumulating this frost on any of our parked cars outside or creating any slick spots. It's just going to stay damp because of all that. Again, the excess moisture and that low cloud cover that'll be overhead through about 9 or 10 o'clock this morning. And what is still just going to be an overall cloudy day today? High is no better than 40 degrees. Now, looking ahead, not just this week, but next week, temperatures might inch above average more days than not. And we'll show you just how that could affect our white Christmas prospects in those days leading up to the holiday. We'll look at that extended outlook in just a few minutes.